with Nvidia's new 3000 series GPUs, power draw has become a very important subject because these powerful GPUs are drawing insane amounts of power over 300 watts. So today we're going to talk about something very important. You see this red power cable? Red means power. We're going to be talking about the importance of a really good power supply with these new GPUs. So remember to subscribe and let's get started. Hey guys, thank you for joining me once again. So today let's talk power supplies and Nvidia's new GPUs. Today we're going to focus primarily on the 3090. That's the big boy, the highest end GPU. The launch was very recently and of course it's been in limited supply, but you know, people have gotten them. And then I think as sort of the weeks go by and the months go by, stock will start to come in. Now I'm going to do more than one video on this. I'm going to do one specifically for the 3090, the 3080 and the upcoming 3070. Now I know these are out in limited stock. Not too many people have them, but eventually they're going to be sort of inundating the market. They're definitely going to be the dominant GPU when people are buying a new one just because the price to performance ratio of GPUs such as the 3080 and the power that the 3090 packs for workstation uses. I think within the next coming year these are going to be extraordinarily popular GPUs as stock replenishes itself. I know right now it's very hard to get them so I want to talk about something very important which is at the base of any good system and especially with beefy GPUs like this and that's going to be the power supply. So today we're going to focus on the 3090 and I've been testing with the MSI Ventus 3X 3090 GPU and oh boy does it pull a lot of power. So let's talk about five different reasons why the power supply is so important in this generation and a lot of these same reasons and tips will also apply to the 3080 and the 3070. There's some specific things for the 3090 but in general these rules apply across the board. All right so let's get started with the first reason. Power draw across this generation is up considerably from last generation. Generation. These GPUs are pulling in almost 100 watts more than something like a 2080 Ti from the previous generation. In fact, with the 3090, I just did just a little quick power draw. It was going over 350 watts of the board power draw. I was running the Heaven benchmark to try to get it up there in the water juice. So that's definitely significant. And likewise, the 3080 and 3070 also have more power draw than their similar counterparts from the previous generation. And of course, the 3090, while it does great for gaming, it's really more of a workstation, almost Titan level card, meaning that people are going to be absolutely beating on the card to render, to do professional work, um, even for some, you know, video editing like DaVinci Resolve, which takes advantage of a GPU like this and more VRAM, um, not to mention Blender. So that means that this GPU may be pegged at its max for a considerable amount of time. And that means it's going to be using the most power and you need that clean, stable power without having any drop issues. And the second reason why you need a very beefy power supply for the 3090. Now this is going to be specific to the 3090 for the most part. Now remember SLI and NVLink. Remember how that's completely done for the 3070 and 3080. So Nvidia pretty much killed that off for gamers. But that doesn't mean that for workstation use and the 3090 is the only one that's going to have that NVLink. They're having a the new little birds to take advantage of the size of the PCBs. That means that the 3090 aside from being able to do like 8K gaming where it's going to be maxed out almost as much as if it was doing some professional application. When you're doing professional applications, a lot of them do take advantage of multiple GPUs. DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editing program from the company Blackmagic, they really utilize GPU performance when you're doing video editing. Um, in the past, it was very CPU intensive. Even if you guys have used something like Premiere Pro, um, in the past, even that used to be much more CPU intensive. And as we know now, GPUs are just so much more efficient, so much more powerful at actually being able to encode files. So for workstation use, if you're going to put multiple GPUs in your system, this isn't even a question. You absolutely need a very high wattage and high quality power supply. A third important reason on why you need a powerful and high quality power supply, the more headroom that you have, the more stable your components are going to be, and also the quieter the power supply will be. If you guys have ever tried to run sort of a semi-powerful system on a power supply that you're right at the edge, let's say if you have like a 650 watt or a 750 watt power supply and your components are going five, 600. The power supply is really not going to be running at its most efficient, especially when it concerns the fan that's in that power supply. It's going to be running all the time to make sure that it's cool. But let's say if you're running that same load, even if it's considerably less than something like a thousand or a 1200 watt power supply, you have significantly more headroom. And that means that the power supply really isn't being stressed that much. 
you're also going to be able to, in general, enjoy much lower fan curves. Some of them even have a 0 dB fan mode, where basically the fan won't even spin unless it hits a certain load. And I've had systems in the past, believe me, even when they're water-cooled, everything is silent. The only thing I could hear was the power supply. The components that I was running and at the load that I was running them at was really getting closer to the limit of the power supply. So that means that the fan was constantly on, it was loud. So to avoid that, ever since then, I've made Make sure that I go absolutely overkill on my power supply. And fourth, something else to consider, often these higher quality power supplies, they're going to have a lot more features that sometimes you don't know how important they are until you actually need them. Of course, the first one is going to be related to the actual mechanicals and the electronics in the power supply. Higher quality power supplies, especially if it's at least gold rated, maybe platinum, you're just going to have a lot better power efficiency. And there are so many things behind the scene that actually works in your favor. Power supplies can be tricky to sort of talk about because they're not necessarily as appealing as like a GPU. But of course, a power supply, it's a little bit more straightforward, maybe a little bit more boring at times, but that absolutely doesn't take away the importance of having a really good power supply, especially if you're trying to power GPUs such as the 3090, which is basically one of the highest end GPUs we've ever seen. A higher quality and higher wattage power supply, the physical housing will also be significantly bigger than something that's a lot smaller. For example, look at this power supply here. It's considerably bigger meaning you have a lot more room, not only for the high quality components, but also for the airflow. Look at the size of that fan in there. That's the same type of fan that I would put like in a water-cooled build or something like that. That's a very large fan. And of course, the larger that a fan is, let's say if you have something that's 140 millimeter, it's gonna be able to push through a lot of air while spinning slower compared to something that's 120 millimeter or some power supplies have even smaller fans. High quality power supplies have modular cables. Basically there's fully modular, semi-modular, and the ones that aren't modular. Fully modular means that every cable can come out of the power supply, can hold it independently like this. You see, these are all sort of the connections for your cable. So let's say if you're only doing uh, one GPU, just plug one in. If you're only doing one CPU for like a workstation, you just plug in one and you don't have to worry about all these cables everywhere. So then you have the option of also doing custom cables and things of that nature. And finally, as I've been testing the 3090, which power supply have I been using? Well, in the past, I've used plenty of different power supplies. You have great companies like EVGA, Be Quiet, Corsair, Seasonic. They all make really great power supplies. A few months ago, and I did a video on this, Main Gear sent me the Main Gear Ignition. It's a 1200 watt power supply. And if you guys remember early in the video, this is actually the cable that it comes with, a red cable, meaning power. As you know, I love gaming and also workstation uses for the computer. So this kind of makes me a little bit happy, even though it shouldn't. It's a pretty cool, nifty little touch. This is the Main Gear Ignition. And as I said, they did send this to me a few months ago but this isn't sponsored or anything like that. First, of course, it has that 1200 watts. And like I mentioned before, if you're gonna be running the 3090 with very intense CPUs, you're gonna need a beefy power supply. And in fact, I'm not gonna be running two 3090s just because I don't have two 3090s. But when I'm doing DaVinci Resolve, I mentioned that it does take advantage of multiple GPUs. So for the second GPU, um, you don't need to SLI them. They can be different GPUs in DaVinci Resolve. It takes advantage of it anyway. I'll be running as a second GPU, maybe a 38, maybe a 2080 Ti, something like that. And this power supply also checks all the other requirements. It's 80 plus platinum. I know the capacitors are very high quality and I've been using it for the last few months as well. So I know it's been 100% reliable. Technically, I've read that like the minimum recommended for like a 3070, maybe 650 watts, um, and then 750 watts plus for something like a 3080 or 3090. But realistically, if you're running a powerful CPU, a lot of hard drives, as you would in the workstation, and you're running a 3090 and possibly a second GPU as well, you definitely are going to need considerably more than 750. So that's why I think 1200 watts gives me the absolute best overhead. And most of the well-known companies do have these models that are much, much better and geared for this type of use. Like I mentioned before, EVGA, Be Quiet, Corsair, this main gear one that I mentioned, Seasonic. They're definitely very high level quality power supplies within their range. So you can kind of choose what's best for you based on availability, the price, exactly what components you're running. But the things that I spoke about in this video, I would definitely take as a guiding point just to make sure you get at least the minimum level of those high quality elements. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below 
below. If you're using a 3000 series GPU, what type of power supply are you using? And is that something that has worried you recently? And I'll see you guys on the next video.